The story opens with a man telling his son the history of their people. Ancient times, a meteor containing vibranium crash landed in Africa. Five tribes began to fight over the vibranium until one of the shamans spoke to the panther god Bast and swallowed an herb that gave him the power to become the first black panther. The man united the tribes to create the nation of Wakanda, leading him to become king. However, the Jabari tribe chose to take refuge in the mountains, isolating themselves from the other tribes. The Wakandans used vibranium to develop highly advanced technology and chose to isolate themselves from the rest of the world by producing a force field that hides the nation from sight. In the present day, T'Challa is set to become king after T'Chaka's death. He is flying over Nigeria with Okoy, a Dora Milaje general. The plan is to extract his ex-girlfriend Nakia as she is undercover with mercenaries smuggling women and young men as soldiers. As Black Panther, T'Challa jumps out of the jet and uses Wakandan tech to disable the mercenaries' vans. As the goons step out to confront T'Challa, he fights them all before finding Nakia. She joins T'Challa and Okoy as they return home. The three return to Wakanda and reunite with T'Challa's mother Ramonda and his younger sister Shuri in preparation for T'Challa's ceremony to become the new king. In London, Eric Killmonger Stevens is at a museum admiring artifacts from African cultures. He asks the guide about a hammer-like weapon, which she recognizes as one thing, but Killmonger corrects her and states it is made of vibranium from Wakanda. The guide then passes out from a something Killmonger slipped into her coffee in order to create a diversion. Medics reach, but they are actually Ulysses Clow and his thugs. They kill the guards, and Killmonger steals the weapon before getting away with his crew. Back to Wakanda, all of the tribes gather by a waterfall to witness. Zuri gives T'Challa a drink that removes the power of the Black Panther. With that, nobody from the other tribes chooses to challenge T'Challa, until the Jabari tribe show up, and their leader, M'Baku, steps up to try and take the throne from T'Challa. Thank you for watching this video, please subscribe our channel. Like and share this video and hit your comments. The two fight, with M'Baku almost succeeding until T'Challa gains the upper hand and puts M'Baku in a hold over the falls until he taps out and surrenders, agreeing T'Challa to rightfully claim the throne. Subsequently the ceremony, T'Challa is given another drink to restore his powers so he is being buried in sand so that he may be taken into the ancestral plane. There, T'Challa sees his father. They embrace as T'Challa breaks down upon seeing him. T'Challa expresses his concerns over becoming king and doing the right thing. T'Chaka tells his son that while he is a good man, it is hard for a good man to be king. Then he back to normal and gained the power of the Black Panther. T'Challa walks through downtown Wakanda with Nakia. He requests her to stay home to help him run things around there, but she says hesitance in continuing to work in Wakanda. Later, T'Challa is with his friend W. Kabi as they check on a wild rhino in a pen. They are then called by Okoy, who is also W. Kabi's lover to the palace. Ulysses Clow is set to sell the vibranium piece to an American buyer in South Korea that night. W. Kabi wants to join T'Challa in finding Ulysses Clow, as he murdered Wikabi's parents, but T'Challa requests that he stay and keep things secure while he goes. Before the mission, T'Challa meets with Shuri, who has developed a number of impressive technology, including sound-absorbent shoes, which she calls sneakers, as well as modifications to the Black Panther suit. It is disguised as a necklace and it absorbs each hit it takes and turns it into kinetic energy. T'Challa, Nakia, and Okoy go undercover in Busan to a casino where they try to find Ulysses Clow and his buyer. T'Challa goes into Everett Ross, who is also undercover. Ulysses Clow and his thugs show up, and he quickly recognizes he is being set up. Okoy is compromised by one of Ulysses Clow's men, pushing her to fight them. Ulysses Clow and his men escape and ride over the streets, leading Nakia and Okoy to follow them. T'Challa follows in his suit although Shuri rides a car through a projection back home that operates an actual car that T'Challa rides on. The villains shoot at him but the hits from the bullets give him the kinetic energy that he redirects to the villains. Ulysses Clow blasts at Nakia and Okoy, destroying their car but not killing them. 
T'Challa grasps Ulysses Klaus' car and rips out a tire, causing him to crash. T'Challa goes to finish Ulysses Klaus, but Nakia reminds him that people are watching. They take Ulysses Klaus into custody. Ross interrogates Ulysses Klaus while T'Challa and Okoy listen in through a device T'Challa fixed on Ross. Ulysses Klaus discloses to Ross what he before didn't know about Wakanda and all that it contains. Outside, Killmonger and his team set up explosives behind a wall. Nakia sees this on security cameras and runs to warn everyone, but the villains blow open the wall. They start shooting, and Ross pushes Nakia out of the way, taking a bullet in the back. Killmonger takes Ulysses Klau away, and T'Challa notices a ring around Killmonger's neck similar to one that belonged to his grandfather. Ross is given something to keep him stabilized until they return home. Ross is being tended to by Shuri, who uses vibranium to heal his wounds. W. Kabi states disappointment with T'Challa for failing to bring in Ulysses Klau. At the same time, the villains head to a plane that Killmonger needs to take to Wakanda. Ulysses Klau takes Killmonger's girlfriend as a hostage since he has other plans, but Killmonger kills the woman himself before shooting Ulysses Klau. He says Killmonger they won't let him into Wakanda until he tells a tattoo on his lip that most Wakandans have. He then shoots Ulysses Klaus dead. T'Challa then goes to find Zuri and ask him why Killmonger had his grandfather's ring. Zuri is then forced to admit what he knew about Njobu. In a flashback, 1992, Oakland, California, two men, Njobu and James are planning to move weapons across the city. A knock is heard at the door. James unlocks it to see two Dora Milaje warriors. Njobu identifies them and reveals himself as a Wakandan. Entering the room with the warriors is King T'Chaka, Jobu's brother. T'Chaka tells Ulysses Klaus stole a quarter ton of vibranium from Wakanda and triggered a bomb at the border to escape. And accuses Njobu of supporting Ulysses Klaus with stealing vibranium from Wakanda. T'Chaka then discloses that James is really Zuri, another Wakandan spy. They discover that Njobu has stolen vibranium to spread it to other people of African descent so that they may fight back against their oppressors. Njobu turned his gun on Zuri, and T'Chaka stepped in and killed Njobu with his claws. It filled T'Chaka with great regret, and they left his son, Eric, behind. The boy was on the courtyard when this happened, and he later saw his father's body. Eric would go on to become a soldier who earned the nickname, Killmonger due to his high body count, which is evident by the marks on his body for everyone he's ever killed. In present, Killmonger enters Wakanda with Ulysses Klaus' corpse. He presents it to W. Kabi, who brings Killmonger to the palace. Killmonger reveals his true name, Njadaka, and that he is Jobu's son. W. Kabi confirms it to everyone when he shows them Killmonger's ring. He announces his intention to claim the throne, and he challenges T'Challa for the spot. Everyone gathers for the challenge by the falls once again. Zuri gives T'Challa a drink that removes the power of the Black Panther. Thank you for watching this video. Please subscribe our channel, like and share this video and hit your comments. Killmonger fights brutally and almost easily overpowers T'Challa. Zuri steps in to try and save T'Challa, knowing it is with him that Killmonger should hold a grudge. Killmonger fatally spears Zuri and takes T'Challa down before throwing him over the falls, to the horror of Ramonda, Shuri, and Nakia. Consequently, Killmonger is made king. Killmonger goes into the ancestral plane and is back in his old apartment where he sees the moment that he found his father's body. He comes across Jobu's old journals and even speaks to the man himself briefly. After waking up gain the power of the Black Panther. Killmonger orders everyone to burn a garden of heart-shaped herbs for future kings, but Nakia succeeds to sneak one away with her. Nakia goes with Ramonda, Shuri, and Ross to the mountains to see the Jabari tribe. They speak to M'Baku and ask for his help. He tells to the group that they fished T'Challa out of the river, and that he is now in a coma. Ramonda grounds the herb into a drink to give T'Challa before they bury him in the snow that he rests upon. He drives into the ancestral plane and sees T'Chaka again, 
this time reproving his actions in leaving Killmonger behind. T'Chaka confesses that this was the truth he hid from his son, and he states regret. T'Challa then wakes up. He requests M'Baku's help in fighting Killmonger, but he refuses. Killmonger now got help from W. Kabi and other Wakandan soldiers as he plans to send their weapons across the world to other operatives and mercenaries as his father had planned. As one of their jets flies overhead, it is shot down by T'Challa, making his return as Black Panther. W. Kabi and his army charge against T'Challa, but he blasts them away with his kinetic energy. Okoy then leads the Dora Milaje into battle and fights with Killmonger, who also fights as Black Panther. Shuri gives Ross access to a jet to take down the others before they leave Wakanda. Ross is able to shoot them all down. Nakia joins Shuri and Okoy as they fight Killmonger, now in his own suit. W. Kabi unleashes armored rhinos into the battle. Suddenly, the Jabari arrive to help the Dora Milaje. One of the rhinos nearly runs down M'Baku until Okoy steps in. She forces W. Kabi and his soldiers to surrender. Before Killmonger can hurt Shuri, T'Challa attacks him and they fall down into the vibranium mines. They continue their fight until T'Challa utilizes the tech down there to mess with Killmonger's suit, leaving him exposed so that T'Challa may impale him with his own short spear. Now vulnerable and dying, T'Challa carries Killmonger out of the mine to see the sunset. Killmonger states guilt over not seeing how beautiful Wakanda really is. Which Njobu had described to him as a sight to behold. T'Challa bargains Killmonger a chance to be healed, but he declines, knowing he would only be imprisoned afterwards. Killmonger desires to be buried at sea with his ancestors, as they knew death was better than bondage. He pulls the spear out of his chest and dies peacefully. Things become calm once again in Wakanda as T'Challa regains his throne. He once again asks Nakia to stay in Wakanda, as he has plans for her to help him. T'Challa brings Shuri to Oakland outside Killmonger's old apartment. T'Challa tells he bought the building, as well as two buildings next to it so that he may establish a Wakandan outreach program that Nakia and Shuri will spearhead. He then brings down their jet so that the kids in the courtyard may see and be in awe. One of the boys then approaches T'Challa and asks him who he is. T'Challa is joined by Nakia, Shuri, and Okoy at the United Nations. He announces his plan to bring Wakanda out of hiding in the hope that they may work together with the rest of the world. Later, three Wakandan children are looking upon someone in a hut. Shuri orders them to not bother the person. He steps out of the hut, and we see it is Bucky Barnes. Thank you for watching this video. Please subscribe our channel, like and share this video and hit your comments.